Welcome. Hi. Issa Yvette saying hello, friends. How are you? We are on Downward Dog. Are you ready for this? Let's do this, okay? Um, muscular energy is a very important key for Downward Dog. What is muscular energy? Muscular energy is when we are using our energy to rebound off the floor. That means like a trampoline. When you jump on a trampoline, there's a sensation of pushing down that lifts and pulls you back up and it jumps back up. So there's this push to pull up, this push down to lift energy up. So when the feet are pushing down, it's like we're pulling energy up the legs. Hey Bella, let me get in here. So then when my hands are down, I am pushing down to lift energy up. So I'm pushing down the floor like I'm pouncing on all fours, like a, a tigger. Push down, lift that energy up, and bow down. Widen the head of the arm bones away from the ears. The inner thighs pull out. As the inner heels click in, the inner wrists click in, the head is elongated, and we look to our navel. Knees are um, not hyperextending, but they're straight if possible, and we squeeze those inner heels in like you're clicking in to go home, like you're Dorothy at the inner ankle and the inner wrist as the wrists and the ankles mimic each other, just as the inner thighs push back and apart, as the inner arms, kind of where your armpits are, pull apart and away from the ears and pull forward. So what's happening is it's a tug of war where the arms are pulling away and forward, kind of pulling you to the front, but the thighs and the hips pull you back. So you're pulling forward and pulling back and pulling forward and pulling back. And then there's this place of, of like, balance and resistance so I'm pulling apart the shoulders and pulling forward but I'm pulling the thighs back and as I do that I'm trying to get my vertebrae longer my spine longer and then bow deeper pull the stomach in lift those kneecaps up pull the shoulders back lengthen the neck five breaths inhale exhale number one thing I want you to think of in here is the muscles should be squeezing your bones we're not hanging out or sloughing off your muscles, off your bones in a lazy style that encourages to emotionally abandon oneself. If your muscles are just sitting there doing nothing, there is a tendency of letting go of oneself. What the heck does that mean, right? Well, it's like if your muscle is squeezing, like literally squeezing and hugging that bone, it literally is like milking. It's squeezing and milking the bone. This is how we get strong bones. This is how we create bone marrow. So we don't wanna abandon in posture and just be lazy because then the muscles are flopping about the bone. We want the muscles to squeeze and hug the bone, encouraging an emotional state of self, love, being with oneself as opposed to abandoning oneself. There's this deep integrity about holding oneself together and there's um, a physical sensation and that's the hugging the muscles to the bone. Adho Mokha Shavasana, the downward dog pose, can be quite tricky. One I've been going through in the other postures, I'm going to do it again so you can see it, where the head of the arm bones are pulling away from the ears so that when we're in pose, we're pulling away from the ears with the arms as opposed to collapsing and the arms rolling in. So I'm trying to avoid this. I want to get to this where the arms are pulling away and apart. So if the inner arm is pulling out and away, the inner wrist pulls in. So we have one motion up here pulling apart and away on the outward direction, head of the arm in the socket, pulling out and away then the inner wrist draws in where the bottom of the forearm, the bottom of the wrist enters in. So this is going inward while well, this is going outward. Out, in, out, in. Same thing mimics the inner thighs. They pull in and back while the inner heels 
squeeze in like you're clicking in to go home. So inner thighs pull back, heels squeeze in, and that enc encourages the muscular hugging of the bone, okay? In a uh, yoga class as a teacher, I would assist people with a strap, especially if you're quite tight, okay? Let's say I have the person here in their downward dog, and I put the strap on their hips, so it would fall right on their hips. The strap goes inside the legs, and as it goes in the legs, it pulls the inner thigh back and out. And it pulls the inner thigh back and out, pulling the inner thighs apart while the inner heels are squeezing in. So if I'm in downward dog, I have the inner thighs pulling back apart as if I had a teacher behind me to hold the strap and pull back and apart. It's gonna pull the inner thighs back, pull them apart, the heels squeeze in, the upper arm bones pull apart of the head, the inner wrists squeeze in. Wrists and ankles are like the same. Upper head of the arm bones and the upper side of the um, thighs are the same. Navel in, vertebrae long. Look under towards your belly button and lengthen the head longer. Let's say you want to do downward dog, but you've injured your wrists or your hands and the uh, wrists are not happy. Then we can go ahead and use your forearms instead. Uh, this is also known as a dolphin. Hi, little Bella. And in your dolphin, you can then go right back to your pose. Inner thighs pulling back, navel in, and breathing here. The opposite of a downward dog. Let's see, one more question. What's the distance between my back of my wrist and the front of my toes? The distance is the top of your hip to the bottom of your heel. So from heel to hip, that distance, I can measure it from heel to hip, is gonna be from the front of the foot to the back of the wrist. That's your pose. Hands are shoulders distance, so the, the wrists are about the hips, the shoulder distance. Um, Traditional, like general, the feet are also hip distance. In older schools of yoga, um, vinyasa yoga from Ram, Rama uh, Swami, the feet are pressing together. This can be a little bit more uh, vigorous. From downward dog, I can move right into up dog, where the shoulders and head arms pull back, the squeezing of the heels remain. And there's a lot of sternum up to the sky, like I'm trying to flip a pancake with the top of my ribs to the ceiling. Up dog. Sorry, baby. Down dog. Up dog. Down dog. Let's do a jump from down dog and talk about why and what is going on there. So from your down dog, you'd bring, let's see, where am I in camera? You'll bring, I'm gonna move back because baby Bella's there. So I'm gonna bring my down dog position, my shoulder, head of my arm bone above my wrists, my drishti is forward, that means my eyes are looking up. Then I'm gonna bring my hips over my ears Soft landing, so there's no pounding on the floor. Inhale, and exhale, fold. Inhale, reaching up. <clears throat> the spark in my heart mirrors the spark in your heart. And that's what Namaste pretty much just means. We ground as we sit in our meditation pose. We ground into earth. And 
starting class, it's always nice to ground before starting. I used to start class with an invocation, which basically just means I honor my own spark within myself as I honor the teacher inside of me. Okay. Shakaram, Sachaka Krasi, the Harenam, Shahastra, Satan, Swetan, Prananan, Nim, Patanjani, O Those lyrics were written by Ram Das for John Friend for the Anisara invocation, which just means I bow down to the auspicious light that lies within me to the teacher that lies within me. Um, hold on, babe, why? Let me get, I have the actual, it's okay. I offer myself to the light, the auspicious one who is the true teacher inside and out, who assumes the forms of reality, consciousness, and bliss. I love that. Who assumes the forms of reality, consciousness, and bliss. Satchitananda Mojaye, who is never absent and is full of peace, independent in their existence, is the vital essence of illumination. So you are the vital essence of your light. Nobody has the power to dim your light. No one has the power to take away your light, unless, of course, you give it to them. Keep your power, my friends. Please help me build my channel by liking so that I can get more likes and algorithms so I can share more yoga with more friends. So much love, so much light. To you. Do you like the invocations? So many Westerns, Westerners can get freaked out thinking that it contradicts their religion and it really doesn't. You can think of it more as a philosophy, kind of like Buddhism is not a religion, it's a philosophy. One that encourages for you to be peaceful inside your own heart and your mind peaceful in your thoughts and the way you think about yourself. Honoring yourself with so much love and dedication as the invocation speaks to bow down to your own feet, to honor your own light and to love and honor the teacher that lays, lies within your heart and your spirit. Nonetheless, acknowledging the lineage of teachings that have come before you that you've learned from. I wish you so much love, so much grace, so much peace. Namaste to you. Thank you for the namaste right back to me. You guys have a beautiful day. So much love, so many blessings. Have an awesome day, you guys. Till next time.